Go first to Corky in Dunsmore, Ohio. Corky, welcome to the program. Hello. This is the first time I've talked to your show, though I listen to it often. Great. Um, I I wanted to ask in a in a challenging sort of way why, if he's appealing to moderate believers to see that their religion is poppycock, um, nonsense, so to speak, why that necessarily makes them an atheist rather than someone who believes that organized religion is nonsense and a lot of politics is personal power rather than about any kind of supernatural. Interesting right. question, Corky. Let's hear what Dr. Dawkins has to say, and we only have about he a minute before the break. Right, I, I do have a lot of sympathy with that. Um, I, I am passionate about what's true, and I, and I, I do actually believe that there's a, a very strong reason to think that there is no God. On the other hand, if you're a sensible religious person who, um, who believes in God but absolutely hates organized religion, and particularly organized religion in power politics, then I'm on your side. We're talking this hour about science and religion with my guest Richard Dawkins. He's an evolutionary biologist at Oxford University and author of The God Delusion. And, uh, well, I, I I know that you describe in the book some of the great debates you've had, and, and I, I think you might have had a debate with the person I want to hear from right now. This is actually, I've, I've got a clip of tape uh, from an interview Ira Flato did with Francis Collins a couple weeks ago, where uh, Francis, I mean, I, 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 Ira was trying to get uh, uh, Francis Collins to expand on the topic of whether or not, it sort of comes out of this last question we had, whether or not an atheist or even somebody who doesn't particularly believe in religion can still have faith. And here's what Francis Collins said. I think they probably are required to have more faith than many people who believe in God because they have to have faith in their own intellect's ability to know so much that they can exclude the possibility of God categorically, which seems to me the greatest statement of faith or perhaps hubris and arrogance that one could imagine. So yes, faith, but in what? But as I look about myself and, and the culture we live in and the world we live in, a world without the kind of noble intentions uh, that arise many times out of people's hearts in the consequence of their faith, a world that, that misses out on a Mother Teresa or an Oscar Schindler, uh, a world where science uh, has to go on in a completely uh, 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 materialist way, it does not sound like the kind of world of wonderful humanity and, and nobility of humankind that I hope uh, will be evolving over the many decades to come. So, uh, I wanted to get your reaction to what Francis Collins had to say, Richard Dawkins. There were two quite separate points there. The right. first one interests me, me more, the one about um, an atheist needs even more faith than a theist because an atheist um, has to exclude positively faith, um, categorically excluded. I think that's such a misguided thing to say. I mean, presumably Francis Collins does not believe in Thor, Apollo, Zeus, unicorns, fairies at the bottom of the garden, the flying spaghetti monster. There are any number of things that he doesn't believe in. And would he say that he has to have faith that there is no such thing as a flying spaghetti monster. I mean, that's really essentially all that he said. Why single out God among that great litany of things that many people throughout the, the ages may or may not have believed in? Why single out God as being something that you have to have hubris and arrogant positive faith in order not to believe? There are a million things Francis Collins doesn't believe in. I don't believe in them either. I just add one more thing, which is the entity that he calls God. Right. And going on to the second point about the losing out on some of the... Well, I know you have a slightly different opinion of, of Mother well, Teresa, I mean, but... Uh, the, the, no, the nobility of certain uh, human um, characters... Uh, I wouldn't mention Mother Teresa in that breath. I, I don't think that she was a very admirable person. However, I do think that Martin Luther King was extremely admirable. I think Mahatma Gandhi was extremely ad admirable. I think that Jesus was extremely admirable. All these and many other admirable and good people were religious. Of course, there are plenty of individual good people who were religious, plenty of individual atheists who were good people, plenty of religious people who were bad, plenty of atheists who were bad. It doesn't really get you anywhere to compile a list of good and bad religious people and atheists. The question you want to ask is, is there any general reason why you should expect that religion or atheism would be more likely to make you good or bad? And that's a very different question. It's not a question that can be answered by a sort of counting heads. 
Okay, let's uh, let's go back and, and invite our uh, callers to uh, join this conversation, and we'll start again with Brent in Kansas City, Missouri. Brent, Hello. welcome to Science Friday. Uh, my question is, um, I am not a theist, and I, I don't like to categorize myself as an atheist, per se, but... I almost, because a lot of my friends that are atheists, it almost seems as that's become their religion. That atheism is now something that they tote as a a belief system. And I almost, that's why I, I don't really know how to categorize myself. I mean, there could be, you know, the flying spaghetti monster or anything. I don't know. I don't care, really. Uh, I mean, what what is your, your view of that? I mean, has atheism become a religion unto itself? Yeah, I, I see what you're saying, and I, I, I think it is a worry. I, I don't think, as a matter of fact, it has become a religion. I'm a little surprised you say you don't care, because I would have thought that that issue... I mean, you and I agree that, that there is no God, but on the other hand, if there was one, it would be a tremendously important fact about life and the universe, would it not? I mean, I, I can't imagine that you would look upon the world in quite the same way if you thought there was a God as you do now when you think that there isn't. So I don't think it's something... Sorry, yes, go ahead. Oh, well, uh, if there were a God, um, there would be no way for me to have any interpret... You know, I, if there were a God, I don't believe that he spoke to... Uh, you know, anybody. if anyone claimed to be a prophet today... You know, they'd be considered uh, another David Koresh. So, I mean, uh, yeah, how do I think you that's right. The dogma of of anything. So, that, I mean, I don't mean that I don't care in a apathetic way. I, I just, if there is a God, great. Uh, you know, if there's not, it it doesn't affect my existence on this planet. Okay. On how I'm going to behave. Okay, Grant. Let's let's hear what let's hear what Dr. Dawkins has to say in the end. Well, I, I think we pretty we pretty much agree. I mean, I, I think we, we we agree that there is no God, and I think we perhaps disagree a little bit on whether we think it makes any difference to us, uh, and and perhaps that's more of a more like disagreeing about the kind of music we like. Hmm. I actually was going to take that in a slightly different direction. What would happen if? Um, if the atheism became ascendant, and here we are in our biology class in high school, and uh, the uh, teacher says, "Johnny, how do you? What do you think about biology?" And the, the ch- Johnny says, "It was God that created everything," and so now Johnny has to sit in the corner with the dunce cap on his head because he's obviously uh, out of touch and out of tune and not with the program, as it were, uh, because science has shown us that uh, everything can evolve. Um, does there is there is there a danger of a totalitarian uh, behavior in the other direction? Well, I suppose there is, but but I mean, if if Johnny said um, that he believes that the world was flat and not round, uh, I suppose he would sit in the corner with the dunce's cap on. I don't think you'd want to call that totalitarian. I mean, the the evidence for the fact of evolution is just about as strong as the evidence that the world is round and not flat. So, I mean, I don't want to victimize any child for what they believe, uh, but I, I do think that children should be exposed to uh, the evidence that is available, and it, as it happens, the evidence for evolution is is massive and, and, and utterly convincing to anybody who studies it objectively. Okay, let's uh, take another call.